to have my wig a little bit more fluffy. Oh, 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 oh. Hello my cuties of all cutinesses. Today we're gonna have a serious talk about makeup brushes. Because I have been checking out several videos about makeup brushes and the use of them and most of the time I see people comparing brands with each other or explaining which brush is for which purpose or which two brands have the same brushes or how much does a Zoeva brush and a MAC brush and a, a this and a that cost? I don't want to do that. I want to show you which brushes I have and what I use them for. But I don't have MAC. I don't have NYX. I don't have all those. those, 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 those. I do have Zoeva brushes. But I also have dupes. And for me, being disabled and on a budget and doing makeup tutorials I need a lot of brushes not that I don't clean my brushes every single time I've used them or every couple of times that I've used them because I do have this and I gotta be careful which looks like a toy but it is a brush cleaning set and it is magic and if you want to know how this thing works I will make a video on that if you'd like to. So let me know in the comments down below if you want to see how to use this thing and how good it is. But my video would be way too long if I go in depth about everything because there is a lot to say about makeup application tools. Because we don't only use brushes, we also use sponges and fluffy puffs and I want to go over that with you all but I don't want this video to be a week instead of a day <laughs> it's like a little monkey <laughs> yes yeah, Simba what you telling darling <laughs> I have got here a brush set which is ideal for a makeup starter, a makeup newie, a makeup virgin, whatever you want to call it. The only thing that is missing in such a set is a huge powder brush, a powder puff, or there's no beauty blender in it, or those are extras. But this particular set, and I'm not sponsored by anyone, I just watch my wallet. That's all I gotta watch. As most of you or all of you know, I'm disabled, I don't get a lot of money in, and I love fashion and I wear wigs because I almost have no hair, I do nails because I almost have no nails, and I gotta talk loud because my bird doesn't wanna shut up. <laughs> He's gonna do the video in my place. These are the brushes that I... <laughs> that bird is driving me crazy! Yeah, you're like a silly monkey, you! So, what you do when you're gonna start doing your makeup is moisturize. Now, I, with myself, pump it in my hands, rub it and put it on. Most of the time I do the same with my face primer. But, if you want to use a brush or to apply your foundation this is a foundation applyment brush this type of brush is flat it's cut it's got a nice hairdo it's synthetic which is very important because synthetic bristles do not suck up any moisture from your product it's not gonna turn your foundation into a powder the consistency won't change. If you were to apply your foundation with a real hair brush, it is going to suck out 
specifically oils and the most needed products that are in your foundation. So use a synthetic flat appliment brush. And I have got one here that I have loved very much. As you can see, this is the brush that I always used. <laughs> is it obvious that he has had his best days, but he's still so good? I even had thought about putting plastic tape around it. But why? I have got these in a set. And this set, all these brushes together, many of them are double-ended, so you get doubles. One euro and seventy cents and one euro sending costs. This brush by Real Techniques costs ten times more than that complete set. People, makeup gurus, I know that you're sponsored. I know that you get things for free to show and to make people buy it and I understand that completely but we can't afford it. I cannot buy the Mac 220 whatever or the, the only thing I ever bought is a couple of Real Techniques brushes and two small Zoeva sets. That's all that I really bought from a brand and one beauty blender. Where am I gonna put them? Oh, I know. I got a box. I got a box. An empty box. Okay, stop being an idiot. If you have applied your foundation with this, I use this one. It is rounded. It's sturdy. It's got a nice density, but this one still has movement. And I know that all other people that I have seen in special brush videos say the more dense, the better, because the product is not gonna crawl into the bristles. Well, I don't agree. I'm sorry, I do not agree. One of the Things that I experienced that are bleh, oval brushes. I've got several types because it was such a hype back then and I have tried different types. What do these and these and these have is like people say because this one even has a hole in the middle where you can put in your foundation to then apply it. So what you do is put your foundation inside the bristles. That's not logic. These type of brushes are recommended by many people, but instead of having to use less product, I find it to be the opposite. Because if I try to clean out these brushes and these have been washed, deep cleansed, I've done everything I can to get inside the brush to get the foundation out and look together with me, you can see how deep the foundation still is in there. It does have orange tips. Do notice the tips are orange but where you see all the stuff going lower than where you normally have your orange tips because i always use this side so it's on that side that you see it the product is in there and it's not coming out not today not tomorrow not ever so these are if you ask me even with disinfective alcohol and everything I can put on it, not hygienic. I'm not a fan. Give me this. Or 
what a very very good alternative is these I love too and this one is by Real Techniques and it's also more round you've got those real flat ones they have a flat side like this but they are more like a trumpet <laughs> I don't have that big trumpet one but what I wanted to say was this shape it is perfect to buff in foundation and so is this one love them very nice density not over the top you can clean them to the bottom and they do the trick very well and they don't leave stripes or strokes and the expensive ones do often they do this one if I use it, and it's the perfect brush if you use a beauty blender afterwards because this one leaves strokes which the oval brushes don't. Now you don't get such a dense one in that very cheap palette. So the best brushes are coming on later in this palette but this palette, I'm saying a palette, it's a set, sorry this set was also very cheap and it's also coming from wish.com where i almost buy everything because where i live it's not the end of civilization but we don't have sephora's we don't have mac stores or anything here i don't even know a real makeup store nearby you cannot walk through a town and go into a store and snuffle around or sniffle around or i just can't i don't have wheels under me but my legs don't carry me that far either i will end up in a wheelchair so what it's just a thought popping up in my mind here buy the set and let's say you spend four euro or, or three extra euro on the thick ones from this set as if you buy one big fluffy brush and a makeup sponge along with it you've got everything you can buy every single brush and applicating tool let's say for 15 euro i keep on blabbering about prices and still up i'm just gonna talk about the shapes and the use now so let's screw real ones cheap ones whatever it is I have said my thing about that let's leave it at that after you have applied your foundation on your face and it's not buffed in perfectly with a brush or you just don't want to use a brush you've got your alternatives the beauty blender and indeed people this is the real beauty blender and many of you will already know it is now this big and if i wet it it is this big this one's dry this one's wet so these eggs grow in size when they get wet and they get very soft and moist and with this you can press in your products and your creams and everything will be perfectly blended and there is not gonna go too much product in there because it already contains water and the water takes in space inside your sponge and a wet sponge will help you to prevent your products to go completely into your sponge now this one is a dupe but it is the best dupe I ever had for the real one because this is a real one I have paid over 20 euro for this one this one I don't know but you can have very good dupes you can have very stiff dupes but they work for concealer and for nose uh, contours and everything to blend that in these are very good dupes but they cannot replace 
the beauty blender to do your whole face with but there's another but there you're not gonna see it now you don't see it now you do see it this is also a dupe that's kind of hard but the shape is very nice it's got such a a barba papa i don't know if you know what that is were things on TV when I was a child. This shape is already better to hold and to buff with but I yesterday or the day before got the perfect dupe for the real beauty blender and that is my diamond. The diamond sponge is the exact same gives the exact same result as a real beauty blender because I have used it today and it worked perfectly. And what you have, you've got edges. You can go on your nose, you can get in the edges, you can go anywhere you like and especially in the corners and underneath your eyes, the shape is better and the quality is the same as the beauty blender but the shape is better so which one to choose i don't know i love them both so if one is clean i will use that one if the other is clean i will use that one if they're both dirty i will use this <laughs> what might be a silly tip and i did that long before it really was used for it i used an egg holder to put in my beauty blender and I have noticed that for a couple of years now it is sold for that purpose too but I was using it from the moment I had my beauty blender I popped it into my egg holder because there is air reaching it from every angle and it's not gonna get fungus or anything because the air can go all around it and it shrinks very fast. Let's say if it's half dry, I spritz uh, disinfective alcohol on it and I let that dry along with the water. So it will evaporate, but it will be cleaned and disinfected. And in such an egg holder, not this type, because there is no air reaching it to dry without getting molded. The old things that we all know is the puff. You can also use this to press in liquids, but these are mostly used for powders. These sponges are like a flower or in a shape. They are stuck together, so you pull them off, you get your triangle. These are perfect for one-time use or for face paint. But I prefer these to use on a friend or so. If I do somebody else's makeup, you always have a clean sponge. You throw it away or you give it to that person and you're always working hygienically. For the liquids, I got one extra example. If you ask me, it's pure shit. It's crap. This thing People can brag about it, but I hate it. And that is the silicone foundation applicator. It's like a fake boob. You put your product on there and you apply it to your face. But why use this when it goes better with the warmth of your own fingers? It's hygienic because you can wash it off. It doesn't soak up any product. The only thing it sucked up is the money I spend on it. Because this, for me, does nothing. It applies, indeed, and you can get everywhere with it. But it, I, I cannot work with it. Is it my stupidity? Is it my fault? I don't know, but I cannot work with it. It's, for me, it's a big no. Now, up next, because I'm blabbering my video full and we're not getting anywhere. Up next, a brush like this, these and these, are all brushes that you can use to apply your concealer. Like you first did with a brush like that, 
to apply your foundation you can if you put concealer on the back of your hand you can use a brush like this or like this in the set it is this brush that you would use to apply your concealer and you can also use this one to clean up with concealer under your brows over your brows around your lips and in every small places where you have to apply concealer this is a con this is a concealer brush but i use it to put eyeshadows in my crease to blend over my crease to put highlighter on to pack on eyeshadow i use it for everything but after the concealer brush and you have applied your concealer you have your concealer buffer so this is actually the baby brother of your foundation brush and i'm gonna see is there one in this set now i have a round one that is very well that shape and density so there is one in such a set that you can use for it so that's very good news it's a bit angled but actually it is the same type of brush these brushes buff in your concealer and after that you go over most of the time with your beauty blender so up next the next brush that you're gonna need is a big fluffy brush and that's not in the set but for almost maybe one or two euro you already have a very big good nice fluffy brush in the other set there is one if you buy real techniques brushes or zoeva brushes you've got your big fluffy brush but the ones that come in sets a brand and a fake they do have a curve on the side they both do because these brushes are actually if you would have your eyes closed and someone switches them up i would not feel any difference they are exactly the same quality exactly the same this one costs almost nothing but i prefer brushes that are more rounded and i've got two favorite ones and one comes from a store that now closed here nearby and their brand was hype so this one is from hype but this people it doesn't have a name but this type of brush to put on your face powder or to go over with um, translucent powder this is a dream these type of brushes are a dream to put powder on your schnout these are everything so you do need one nice big fluffy brush if you cannot buy that from the beginning of your makeup experience just take one from a set it works perfectly i just prefer those that's my preference it's got nothing to do with quality better this or better that i just like that shape better then next once you've got all your powders and stuff on you're gonna contour now in these sets you have got your contour brush contour is to shape the shadows of your face you have flattened everything first with foundation then your concealer then your powders everything has made your face flat concealer has brought back light and you want to bring back your natural shadows or you want to overdo or you want to do drag it doesn't matter what you're gonna do is bring a shadow on the hairline on the temples under the cheekbone actually and under the jawbone so forehead temples cheekbone then you go down below 
to the jawbone. So people say lately, and that's the best way to do it, you make a number three. And a reversed three on the other side with cheap one, cheap one. These are also used for that purpose because you can really carve out the line. I prefer these. <laughs> Let's contour. Oh, and I'm forgetting one. If you buy hula bronzer, this applicator comes with it. So this is what you get with the real hula bronzer. This, but specifically to shape here. So if you see the shape of this, it is logical that these brushes are also used for this purpose. But I don't like either of them. I prefer them, as I said, more a flat, but rounded off and sliced brush that nicely, softly goes in there. And if you want to work your way up, you turn your brush around. So you carve your line like this, and then you can turn it around to go in that shape of your cheek. And then you work your way up and down. This is my perfect shape. And this one is the Zoeva one. So this is from that set and this is from Zoeva. And actually they are also the same density, the same quality. So this shape of brush is my personal favorite but from the cheap set these are magnificent too this is a real contour brush that is more dense which i had bought in the beginning because i was holding on to that shape that we learned to use when the hula bronzer started to hype up this is a real, real contour brush. I don't like it. Now, this one I bought from a brand. This one is by NARS. And it is actually a very small brush. You can see through this. Hello. There is a small, very, very dense brush in between a real stitched holder and this one is by NARS. Now I must say this one, and you might see it, has been well loved. This is so easy. If you just see, wham, bam, just feathering a little bit, whoop, 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 and you're ready. This one was worth its money. I admit it, if a brand is very good too. It's so handy, it doesn't take in much space because you can fit it everywhere because it's so flat, but the shape and the density is wonderful. But then again, ta-ta-ta! The huge fan brush. I am a huge fan of the big fan brush. With a fan brush, you can shape everywhere, you know. Wonderful. But what I very, very often use is a kabuki brush. These are also perfect and they're so soft. I've got two of these. I always use the both. This one I even had to tape back together because the rope was coming loose and there is a plastic still inside. This one I use for contouring or bronzing and this one I use for blush. 
These are mm, magnificent. I love these brushes. That's why I have two, because I always use them for the both. I bought me this. This is wonderful. This is so soft, it contours and bronzes so easily. And this one for the nose contour, it is so easy for the lower lip shade. This is actually my most used brush. You can see that in my videos. Then, moving on to blush. I already showed you that Kabuki brush. This one is like a real Techniques, but it's a dupe. But it is the, and there's still product in. Uh, you will see me use this one for a blush actually most of the time I will use this one but in the sets like in this set you've got your big fluffy one and you got a smaller one which you can use for blush in the normal sets there's almost all the time a real angled blush brush because it's got the shape of where your blush has to come. It makes it very easy for people who are new to makeup if you put that onto your cheekbone you can just follow that shape and you've got your blush. Of course if you want to do the apples of your cheeks you just come more forward but if you follow this line along with the brush your blush will be always in its perfect place. By the way, Eva, you have this one. So, if it's an expensive set or a cheap set, most sets have these angled blush brushes. This set has got an angled one, but it's not for blush. It is too dense to use for blush. It's more like foundation brush. This, this and this are all types of blush brushes and they are all good. I prefer actually the big, it's almost like a tulip brush, the big fella. I prefer this. Now we are coming to Highlights. For highlighter, I almost all the time use this and it's brandless, but I bought it specially, separately, because I've got this one from a set and it feels like real plastic hairs, while these are real hair. That is hard and it that just doesn't work for me. For a powder, I prefer a real hair brush. Like this hair brush it has got the same bristles as this one. The hair is exactly the same. These are so soft and fluffy, while these are... You can hear it. Now I'm gonna do it just as hard. And in this cheap set, even softer, so for your, oh, it feels like heaven on my cheek. This one is so soft, so take a very, very soft, 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 fluffy brush to do a highlight. But, not only the fan brushes are perfect for highlight because this real technique is actually what's the name it's a setting brush this type of brush is actually to set your concealer but i prefer it to do highlighter with with my other set instead of a fan brush this contour brush, which I don't use for contour, is then again perfect to highlight. I 
don't use this to contour with, but it is a contour brush. But I use this contour brush to highlight because it is the perfect highlight brush. Brush. So you don't have to use things for what they are meant for. This Zoeva, and it's a luxe crease brush, is perfect to do highlight. And it's actually an eye brush. There is one more that I love to highlight and that is my white tulip brush. This was my first real tulip brush. I bought it specially to highlight with their flat side. A perfect highlight brush. But now recently you have this domed shape or whatever they name it and it is more pointed and it is super super fluffy while this one is dense this is a super super duper fluffy brush and you can also contour with it do blush with it set concealer with it but this is now my go-to highlighting brush so I now use this or my favorite fan brush and I think that my favorite fan brush is gonna have to move sometimes for this one because this one is even softer but this is mm, heaven on a highlight and I've got different highlighters so it's a privilege to have different types of brushes because I can use them for different colors and I don't have to wash them all the time. Now one little thing that I didn't mention with foundations that is a stippling brush. Now a stippling brush has got two types of hairs. It's got short hairs and it's got long hairs. Now this one is a real technique style stippling brush and as you see I can push aside the long hairs and you've got its real hair you've got the small short ones in black and the, the other ones were kind of beigey white what this does is if you put foundation on the back of your hand and you take your product it is only gonna be taken up by the long thin hairs you can stipple it on and what it's gonna do it's gonna either apply with the tips but the density changes where you get your double hairs so it doubles in density so if you put on foundation and I'm gonna show it on my hand if you put on foundation you stipple on your product and then you can buff it in so it's a double use of brush and it's actually for a liquid for foundation but I like this for blush too because it applies it easy again preference using things for not what they're for okay so now actually our face is done so what you can use now is a setting spray and what a setting spray does is melt all your powders and products together. So you've got your foundation, on top of your foundation you have your powder, your face powder, you've got your contour and maybe even a bronzer. You've got your blush and you got your highlighter and you've got normally also your eye makeup. Now a setting spray kind of melts the powders a little bit and it's gonna make it one 
surface. It would be as if you take all different types of paint and you can layer it with different brushes or you can layer it and then blend it with a sponge and you will have a fade, like a rainbow fade. That's what a setting spray does. And now I think I have blabbered enough for this big brushes part. So I really want to thank you all for your patience and for listening to my blabbering all the day. <laughs> okay, I really, 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 really want to thank you for watching this video with me. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Leave some nice comments down below. Give me some thumbs up. Ring the notification bell to know whenever I load a new video. And for me, there's as always just one thing left to say. And that is, my love for makeup is spread all over to you. And I really hope to see you again soon in one of my coming videos. So for now, bye-bye. Sure hope you got that. And that too. And I will see you again in part two of my brush explanation, makeup application tools video. Because I'm going to show you what small brushes are for. See you then.